Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. Today let's solve minimum cost climbing stairs. And this problem is very similar to another problem that we've solved that's called climbing stairs. And honestly, I think this is probably one of my best videos uh, explaining dynamic programming. I really walk through uh, all the steps from recursion to memoization to dynamic programming. So I will link this video somewhere on the screen or somewhere on the description if you want to take a look. It's very similar to the problem that we're solving right now, which is minimum cost climbing stairs. It's just a slight variation of that other problem. So we're given an integer array called cost where cost of i is the ith step on the staircase. And if we pay that cost at index i, then we can either climb one step or two steps from index i. So in this example over here, we're given an array of 10, 15, and 20. What we're told is that if we pay this cost, if we're at this position, right, and we pay the cost of 10, from this position, we can either take one step, which will land us in this position, or we can take two steps, which will land us in this position, and we only have to pay a cost of 10 to do that. And also, we are told that we can actually either start at index 0 or start at index 1. So we can either start from this position or we can start from this position. And our goal is to reach the top floor of this staircase. So you're probably thinking, okay, let, let's just start at position uh, index zero, right? Take a jump of two, uh, which costs 10, right? Because we're taking two steps starting from here. So that costs 10. Then we reach this spot and then we're done, right? We've reached the top floor. So therefore the answer is 10, right? Well, not quite, and it's kind of tricky. I think it's really their fault that they word this problem kind of poorly. In this case, the answer is actually 15. Why is it 15? Well, it's pretty simple. It's because this is the last position in our cost array, but this is not the top floor. The position right after that is considered the top floor, which, yeah, they don't really specify that anywhere in the description, which is kind of dumb, but that's the thing. So uh, the reason why the answer is 15 is because remember, we can either start at this index or we can start at this index. If we start here, then we can take a jump of two, which will reach, which will land us at the top of the staircase. It only costs us 15 to do that. Or we could start at 10, take a jump of two, and then take a jump of one, which would cost us 30. Or we could from 10, jump to 15, and then take a double jump, which would cost us 25, 10 plus 15. Uh, so clearly the minimum was when we start at 15 and then just take a jump of two. So then the result is 15. So then your next idea might be, let's just be greedy, right? Why not always, you know, let's start at one of the positions, either this one or this one, and then always take two steps, right? Why exactly would we ever want to take one step when we could take two steps, right? And it costs us the same amount. Well, there's an answer to that question. And let me show you an example, a counter example of why sometimes we would want to take one step rather than two. The main reason is because maybe if we take two steps, there's a value over here, something like a thousand, right? A really big number. And then we'd have to either take one step or two step, but either way, we'd have to, it would cost us a thousand if we land here, or we could take maybe one step and yeah, we'd have to pay 15 and then have to pay a 20. And then we could though take two steps. Uh, to maybe a value over here that's really small, like five, which would skip us a value like over here, which would be a thousand. So you can't really be greedy. And actually the second example down here is another reason, uh, is another counter example of why we can't always take two steps. So let's really try to understand how we can at least brute force this problem because we've noticed that from every spot, we have two decisions, right? Take a jump of one or take a jump of two and we can't just be greedy and take a two jump every single time so let's try every single possibility and if you've watched any of my videos you know that we like to do decision trees when we're brute forcing so suppose we start here we start at index zero and we have you know zero one two to th this index and this index is out of bounds and that's when we know we've reached the goal and we can stop so initially we start at zero right we can either jump to index one or index two. And the cost if we jumped to index one would be 10. The cost if we jump to index two would also be 10. Now, if from index one, we can either jump once, right? Meaning we jump to index two, or we can do a double jump and jump to index three. Of course, if we're at index one, the cost to jump from there is gonna be 15, whether we take a one jump or if we take a double jump. 
From index 2, we actually only have one choice. We can take a single jump, which will land us at index 3, which is actually out of bounds. If we take a double jump, we'll get to index 4, which doesn't really make any sense because that's also out of bounds. So in this case, uh, the cost from jumping from index 2 is 20, so we can put that. Now, just so you know, once we reach index three, which we already have done in two of our uh, paths, as you can see, we can't really go any farther from here, right? So what we're gonna say is as we've stopped here, we, we wanna know, okay, we, we reached the end, right? We wanna know what was the minimum cost to reach this position. So uh, one path, if we jump like this, the cost was 10 plus 15, which is 25, right? That's the total cost to reach this. Uh, taking this path, it was 10 plus 20, which is larger. It took 30 to reach this spot. But we're not quite done yet. We know we can't go in this direction, so you know we're done here, but there's still one node in our decision tree that we can continue to traverse. So from index two, we can take another single jump and then get to index three. And of course, that's gonna cost 20 to do that. And so the cost is 20, so you can already tell that this is definitely not the solution. This took about, what, 45 to reach uh, index three. So definitely not good. You can see there were three different ways for us to reach uh, the goal. And among all of these, the minimum was 25. But remember, if we go back to the actual description, the answer to this problem was actually 15. So why didn't we end up with the correct answer? And it's pretty simple because remember, we were allowed to start at index zero or allowed to start at index one. But clearly in this decision tree, we started at index zero. So don't we have to draw another entire decision tree starting at index one? Well, if you're clever and you take a look at this picture, you know, starting from index one, don't we already have that entire decision tree? Just look over here, right? We started at index one here. Now we did do some work before we got to index one, but can't we just pretend like that doesn't exist? Can't we just reuse this entire decision tree? Uh, obviously, we'd have to modify the numbers a tiny bit, right? Because uh, when we start from here, the cost so far is not 10, it's actually zero because we're pretending like we actually started from here, right? And that will be easy to handle for us if we recursively implement this solution. Uh, so what I'm saying is for us, to, if we started at at one, you know, we'd put a path over here on the right and then get to three. And the cost for that would be 15, not 25 as we have down here. And the other path where we go left, we go uh, jump to position two and then jump to position three. That would cost us 15 plus 20, which means the total would be 35 rather than 45, right? So not 45 over here, it would actually be 35. The main point of what I'm trying to show you is there's repeated work here, right? If we take this solution as it is, it's exponential because it's a decision tree. Each node is going to have two branches, right? Up to two branches. And we're going to keep doing that until we get to the base case, right? Which is index three. So what's the possible height, the max height of this tree? Well, we could have a potential level for every single position in the input array, right? So the height of the tree is gonna be N, uh, which is equal to the length of the cost array, right? So N is equal to the length of the cost array, and we know that we could have two branches for every single node, so the time complexity comes to two to the power of N. But as we just showed, there's a lot of repeated work that we're doing. If we eliminate that repeated work, we can actually get this time complexity down to big O of N. Because what we're noticing is uh, to solve the original problem, which is what's the minimum cost if we start at index zero to reach index three. To solve this problem, we're asking uh, a couple more questions. We're basically solving the sub problem. We're asking, okay, how about to solve this problem, we have to first figure out if we're starting at index one, what's the minimum cost of reaching index three? And to solve this problem, we're asking another sub problem down here. Okay, what about if we start at index two, then what's the minimum cost to arrive at index three? So if we cache this repeated work with a hash map or something, so that we don't repeat the same problem multiple times. What I'm saying is, over here, you can see that we start at index two and we wanna know how, what's the cost to reach index three. Well, it turns out that it was 20, right? From two to get to three, it costs 20. So then when we're try, trying to solve that same sub problem over here, starting at index two, how much does it cost to get to index three? Well, it was 20. 
we don't actually have to run through that because we already solved that problem over here. Right, so that's the main idea of how we can get this to big O of n. The reason it's big O of n is because we have n sub problems. We're asking, okay, from index zero, how long does it take to get to three? From index one, how long does it take to get to three? From index two, how long does it take to get to three? So that will be an O of one operation for each position in the array, which will be n time complexity. It'll also be O of n memory complexity. And if we take this idea of caching the recursive solution, we can actually get an iterative solution that I'm going to show you now which will have the same time complexity and you know pretty much the same memory complexity as well so now let's actually go over the real dynamic programming solution which will actually have a slightly better memory complexity because we can actually use the input array itself that we're given and we could actually even just use two single variables to do the DP solution. Let me show you why. So we noticed that to solve the original problem, right, starting from index zero, what's the minimum cost to reach the out of bounds position or the top of the staircase? We first have to solve the sub problem of starting from one and starting from two, right? So basically this has a dependency of this and this, but we also learned that this has a dependency of this and this. And basically every one of these cells has that dependency. So how about we actually solve this problem from right to left rather than from left to right? Let's solve the sub problems first and then solve the original problem. Okay, so does that mean we're going to start from index two? We want to know how, what's the cost for this to reach index three? Well, it has two choices. It can do one jump or two jumps. The second jump doesn't do anything because it also goes out of bounds, right? The first jump will go out of bounds. So that's enough for us. And what's the cost to reach three? Well, it's going to be just 20. Yes, that works. So we can just leave 20 here, right? So from index two to reach out of bounds, it takes 20. But what about from index one? Now we kind of get into one of the more interesting cases, right? From here, we can also do a single jump. So then we're asking, okay, if we do a single jump, it'll obviously cost us 15 to do that single jump, but also the value that should be in this position is from index two, how long does it take to reach index three? Because then what we can say is, okay, for index one to reach index three, we can just take 15, which was this jump, and then 20, which was the remainder, right? The remainder to reach index three. So we can, in this position, Position, we can put 15 plus 20 but hold on because there's actually two paths right we already handled the single jump case but what if we do a double jump from index one then what's the cost that we'd put here well we'd put 15 because that's the cost of making the double jump but then we'd want to also add the value that goes here to that total result right because from index three how long does it take to reach index three it's kind of a weird question logically to actually ask, but just to make the math work out, the easiest number we can put here is zero, right? Because if we're already at index three, it obviously doesn't cost anything to, to stay here. So that's the reason why we're putting a default value here of zero. Now, now we actually have to look at two choices, right? Because one possibility was we go here, make a single jump to two, and then go to three, right? The cost of that will be 15 plus 20. Another possibility is we stay, we start here and then just do a double jump to this position, right? And the cost for that is going to be 15 plus zero because there's a zero here. So we want to take the minimum of both of these values. What's smaller, 35 or 15? Of course, 15 is smaller. So we're going to put the minimum of these two computations in this position. And the good thing is it's already 15. And last, we're going to start from index zero. We're going to see, okay, 10 plus the cost, you know, 10 is the cost for making one jump. And then from here, from index one, what would be the cost to, to you know, do the remainder of reaching index three? It's just going to be the value that's here, which is already 15. So 10 plus 15 is 25. That's one possibility. The second possibility would be making a double jump. So from here, a double jump, 10 plus 20, which is the value here, is 30, right? So we want to take the minimum of those two values. Of course, 25 is smaller than 30, so we put 25 in this position.
So now in this array, every single index represents the entire cost it would take from this index to reach the end of the array or the top of the staircase. From two, it would be 20. From index one, it would be 15. And from index zero, it would be 25. Now, what value do we actually want to return? Remember, we can only start at index zero or index one. We can't start at index two, and we definitely can't start at the top of the staircase. So what we're gonna return is just gonna be what's the minimum of the first two values in this array. Of course, the minimum of these two is 15, so we can just return 15. As you can see, the the time complexity was definitely big O of n. We just you know iterated through the array in reverse, and the memory complexity is uh, technically big O of one because we're not really we're just using the input array itself. And you actually don't even need to use the input array. You don't need to write over the input array because if you notice, as we go in reverse, uh, you know this value only depends on the next two values and this only depends on the next two values. So really, if you wanted to, you could just keep two uh, variables in memory rather than even writing over the entire array. And then as you go in reverse order, you could update those variables to you know the correct values. But it's your choice of how you want to code it up. Speaking of code, now we can finally jump into the coding solution. Okay, so now let's jump into the code. And this is the same example that we were basically working on. And remember, what we wanted was to just have another extra zero at the end of the array, just to make the math work out easily for us. So that's what we're going to do to these input array, we're just going to append a zero value to it. And then we want to iterate through this array in reverse order, right? So what index are we going to start at? Well, in the drawing, I started at this index. But remember, what we're going to be doing is taking this and then looking at the next two values that come after it. Of course, for the last index, or this index that I'm showing, there aren't two values that come after it. So we should actually start at this index. And that makes sense for us because we're not actually gonna be updating this value because we're just gonna take 20, add it with zero, which doesn't change this value at all, right? So that's why we're gonna be starting at this index. How we can get this index is basically the entire length of the array. We know that the entire length of the array minus one will give us the last position, right? Length minus one will give us this position. So really we can do length minus three, which will give us this position, which is where we want to actually start at. So we're gonna do the length of the cost array minus three. And this is just how you do it in Python, at least with a for loop. And we're gonna decrement uh, we're going to keep going all the way until we reach the beginning of the array, and we're going to decrement by one each time. If you're not familiar with Python, all we're doing is just iterating starting at this position in reverse order from this array. So remember what we want to do for cost at index i. What we want to assign this to is really the minimum of cost of index i plus cost of index i plus one, right? Because from here, if we make a single jump, we're gonna land here. So we wanna add that the value at that position that we land at to the original position. The second choice is if we make a double jump. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this because it's pretty similar. If we make a double jump, this is what uh, the computation will be like, cost of i plus cost of i plus two. But if you want to actually simplify this line of code, you can see that since both of these computations have cost of i as the first uh, you know, value, we can actually just remove cost of i from both of these and actually just take the minimum of these two and add it to the original value. So we can just change this line to this, right? Take the minimum of these two and add it to cost of i. Yeah, that's the entire code. Just iterate through it in reverse order, do the computation, and then the only thing you have to return is the minimum of the first two values of cost of i, so cost of zero and cost of index one. And the main reason that this works is because we're guaranteed that the cost array is going to have at least two values. If we weren't guaranteed that, then we couldn't necessarily do this line over here. But Let's run it to make sure that it works. Let me just delete this first line up above so we don't get any errors. And as you can see on the left, yes, the solution works and it's pretty efficient. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel if you would like. And hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.